Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. Today guys, I'm going to be taking a look at the Cadia Stands box set and recommending how you should build the models to make sure you get the best bang for your buck. Now I'm sure you're all just like me, really excited about the Cadia Stands box set. It comes with all sorts of great goodies in it. You get the codex, the data cards and loads of great new interesting models. Now I know some people will be buying the Cadia Stands box set because they're an older, more veteran guard player and you just want to get those new models and add them to your collection ah general kenobi another lightsaber to add to my collection or in this case another goddamn guardsman model to add to my collection but i know also that with the release of the new guard range lots and lots of new people are getting into the faction and picking up the Cadia Stands box set. Maybe you're brand new to Warhammer 40k and you just like the look of these regular humans, you want to recreate some Starship Trooper vibes or Star Wars vibes, or maybe you're a veteran Warhammer player but you've never really been interested into the guard, but finally those new models have sucked you in. So if it sounds like you're in one of those two groups of people, then this video is definitely for you. I'm going to be going through every unit in this box set and recommending how you build the models. I'm also going to be explaining why I've picked those weapon loadouts. And the reason I'm making this video is because if it's true for most 40k armies, but I find it's especially true for the guard, you have so many choices in each individual squad. Unlike Space Marines where, oh, I just have to pick what kind of rifle I'm going to give my intercessor squad, or with some units, they just come with a fixed loadout. In the guard, even the sergeant's got about three or four different weapon loadouts that you can give him. And as a newer player, either to 40k or to the faction Imperial Guard, the last thing you want to do is build a model in a way that then turns out to not be very good. You know, you don't want to spend your hard-earned hobby dollars and time building something that you're not going to enjoy. So the point of this video is to make sure with the Cadia Stands box set, you are getting the best possible bang for buck. But with that introduction out of the way, now let's dive into this video. And the first thing I want to do is take a look at what models you get in this box set. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is the Cadian Shock Troops. Now you get two squads of these guys. Each squad is going to have 10 soldiers in it. Now with these 20 infantry, I would build the following models. I would build two sergeants with drum-fed auto guns. They look a little bit like Tommy guns. The sergeant with the drum fed auto gun is just a straight upgrade over a standard trooper with a las gun. After that, I would build two models with plasma guns and two models with melter guns. I would avoid building anybody with the flamers or grenade launchers at this stage. Later on, when you expand your collection, you can come back to those parts and start expanding out with spare special weapons such as grenade launchers and flamers. But to be honest with you guys, Plasma and Melt has always been the better options for your guard infantry. After you've built your two sergeants and four weapon specialists, you are going to want to get two Voxcasters. Voxcasters are really good and they help support your infantry squads by allowing them to receive orders from your officers from much further away. Without Voxcasters, you're going to have to find your officers running around right next to your infantry squads and that makes it much more restrictive. Voxcasters are a great way of adding flexibility to your army. So once you've built your two sergeants, your four specialist gunners, and your two Voxcasters, you should be left with 12 models left over, and all of those should be built with straight up LAS guns. They should be your standard troopers. Now, after you've built your Cajun Shock Troops, you're gonna need to give them some fire support, and I would recommend you then start taking a look at your artillery with the field ordnance batteries. Now, straight up, I would recommend building both of these with the Bombast Cannon. Now, the reason I recommend you building these as the field Bombast Cannons is because they have firstly the best all-round profile they're not too anti-infantry too anti-tank you can realistically fire them into anything and you have a good chance of tearing a chunk out of it but the main reason that i like the field bombast cannon is its ability to fire indirectly that means it does not need line of sight to shoot its target you could hide these guys behind a completely solid wall with no way that either they or the enemy could see them but they can still target pretty much whatever they want on the board they basically shoot their shells up and over they're like a classic artillery gun because of this they're able to fire at the enemy and more often than not unless the enemy has also got indirect fire 
the enemy can't shoot back and try and take them out. So it allows you to bombard your enemy with impunity. However, if you are confident with magnets, I would highly recommend that you magnetize these models. At some point, the heavy last cans are probably going to become in vogue. Likewise, with the multiple rocket launcher. If you're not confident with magnets, I think the bombast cannon is the safest option. But if you are, I would certainly and highly recommend you magnetize the field ordnance batteries. Now, the next unit that I want to quickly go over is the Sentinel. Now, you'll be able to build this in two different varieties, either a Scout Sentinel or a Armored Sentinel. At this stage, really, it comes down to player preference. What you've got to ask yourself is, would you rather have a unit that was much more maneuverable and faster, or would you rather have a unit that was a bit slower, but tougher and also able to withstand small arms fire much more effectively. If you like the idea of a fast, sneaky sentinel going around and being a bit of a nuisance to the enemy, go for the scout version. If you like the idea of a big ATST style thing and just blasting your enemy with a bit more firepower and also being able to take a punch in return, then you should consider the armored sentinel. The Sentinel comes with a fantastic amount of weapon loadouts. In fact, it's one of the most versatile vehicles that the Guard gets. If I'm going to be totally honest with you, the best thing to do is magnetize them. 40k is a constantly changing game. There are going to be some months when the autocannon is the best option, some months when the heavy flamer, and then maybe six months later, it's going to be the last cannon. And so if you stick them on with glue, you're going to find that your Sentinels might get stuck with a weapon that right now is great, but later down the line might not be the best choice. I know to a lot of newer players, magnetization can seem really fiddly and faffy and you don't want to bother doing it, especially if you're really excited to get into the new models. But trust me, it, I was exactly the same as you. And the moment I learned to magnetize my weapons, it just meant that I was able to have such a better variety of models and was able to just bend with the changes of the meta and with of 40K. If you really had to twist my arm, and I had to recommend one singular loadout for the new Sentinel, it would probably be the Plasma Cannon. The new Plasma Cannon is greatly improved over the old one. It used to be the case where if you rolled a 1 to hit with it, then the Sentinel just died, no matter how many wounds it had just died. Now if you roll a 1 to hit with it, the Sentinel takes a mortal wound. That is much, much safer. It comes with a great strength profile, great AP, great damage, and the best bit is the Sentinel has easy access to all sorts of rerolls and orders that allow it to hit hard, hit accurately, and more often than not, avoid doing any damage to itself so right now at the time of recording this video if you had to twist my arm i'd say that plasma cannon but honestly magnetizing them is the way to go and finally we get to one of my favorite units not only in this box set but just in general in the new codex we have the command squad now the command squad can be built in a whole bunch of different ways but this is the way that i would recommend building your first one. I'd recommend that you build your officer with either a LAS pistol or a bolt pistol and a chainsaw. You want to keep him as cheap as possible. Power swords and plasma pistols do look great, but more often than not, he's not going to use them. What you've got to remember is you're a standard human in a world of pain and monsters and warp demons. You are not going to be able to go toe to toe with them. The best thing you're going to be able to fight is other guardsmen, and maybe things like Gretchen and smaller turreted organisms. You're never really going to be able to get into a big fight, even with something as straightforward as a Space Wing Intercessor Squad. So keep that officer cheap and have him doing his main function, which is leading the men, supporting them, and handing out orders. To support your officer, you're going to want a Master Vox Caster. The Master Vox is absolutely essential. It allows your officer to be able to order your units around from 24 inches away. Way. Without that Master Vox, you're looking at a six inch order range. That is very, very small, especially now the order done in the command phase and not in the shooting phase. That means if you don't have a Master Vox, you're going to have to be very, very good at setting yourself up for not just the command phase that you're currently in, but for the next one as well. Get that Master Vox in the squad and all of that pressure just goes away. So without a doubt, it is the number one and most recommended option that I say you give your Command Squad veteran. The next upgrade that I highly recommend is the Regimental Standard, the flag. And I recommend it for three reasons. The first one is it just looks so cool. There's just something so Imperial Guard about your guys marching to battle with their laser guns and their advanced plasma weapons 
underneath a Napoleonic style flag. I mean, it's just so cool. The second reason is that it actually does hand out a very important buff. All of your infantry around the command squad will get real ones to wound if it has a regimental standard, and that really does help boost their damage output. The next upgrade I'd recommend is the medic. Now, I know some people are going to be surprised at that because there is the option to take two special weapons in the command squad, but I would actually recommend the medic because it provides a really big durability boost to the command squad. What the medic does is it means each time that you fail a save, Instead of just losing a model, you roll another dice, and on a 5+, plus, that model doesn't die. It's really, really effective, and it helps keep your command squad in the fight. And combine that with the fact that in total, the command squad actually has 8 wounds, because the officer has 4. It actually means that with the 5+, plus, uh, ignore lost wounds, and with the 8 wounds, this squad is probably as tough, if not tougher, than one of those big 10-man squads, which is really, really cool. It also gives you access to a unique stratagem that will allow you to bring back models from the dead. So overall, it just means that your command squad is much, much more durable. And even if it does take some casualties, it can hopefully restore some of them in later turns. Now, the last model in the squad is a little bit tricky. You see, at the time of recording this video, we don't know exactly what you get in that command squad box. Maybe it will come with all the different special weapons that you need. But right now, we just don't know. I would recommend building in with a special weapon. If the command squad box comes with a melter gun or a plasma gun option, I would definitely give the final veteran one of those two options. Personally, I'd probably lean towards the melter gun. You don't have to risk overcharging it and it also helps you create quite a classic loadout for the command squad. However, if the command squad does not come with a plasma gun or a melter gun, then I'd recommend that you use one of the spare special weapons from your Cadian Shock Troops. You see, the Cadian Shock Troops are going to come with Plasma and Melter and stuff like that, but you're going to put those weapons in the squads, as we discussed. But that does mean you will have leftover Grenade Launchers and Flamers. Now, it's up to you which one of these options you put in your Command Squad. I'd probably recommend the Flamer, though. You see, the new Command Squad only has a Ballistic Skill of 4+. Back in the day, it actually used to hit on 3s. 4 plus to hit isn't a great value, and so firing a grenade launcher off with a 50-50 chance of hitting isn't great. However, flame is automatically hit, so you get around that issue. So if it's up to me, I would recommend that if you have to use the spare bits from the Cadian Shot Troop box, you use the flame a bit. But that's all I've got time for today. Now, if you're on the fence or you're still considering picking up the Cadian Stands box set, but you feel like you've missed out on the GW pre-order, don't worry, I actually have an affiliate link for Element Games down in the description below, and they're still taking Cadia Stands pre-orders. So if you still want to get your hands on that box set, don't worry, use that affiliate link down in the description below. Not only will you save about 30 quid on the box set, but you'll also be able to use my referral code TIM3921, and that will make you earn double store credit for future purchases with Element Games. And overall, it just means you save a boatload of money. So if you want to pick up the Cadia Sands box set, check out that link down in the description below. But that really is all we've got time for today. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Do you agree or disagree with the weapon loadout choices that I have recommended today? If you've enjoyed today's video or found it useful, then please consider smashing that like button and also make sure you subscribe to never miss an episode. If you've really, really enjoyed today's video or you found it particularly helpful, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to the generous support of my channel members and patrons that I'm able to do Mordian Glory full time now. And that gives me a lot more time to work on each video and to come up with the best advice possible for you guys. By becoming a channel member or patron, you get access to a whole host of perks. But one of the biggest one of those is the fact you get access to the Mordian Glory Discord. That is a Discord group with over 600 active members there's always someone to chat to it's full of really really helpful and experienced players and it's a great friendly community for newer people and veteran players to get involved with there's everything from memes to hobbying to painting to tactics to just general chit chat going on all the time so if it sounds like a whole host of fun then please consider becoming a channel member or patron supporter and getting yourself in that discord and I'd just like to take a moment now to say a big thank you to all of the latest channel members. So thank you, Matthew Muto, Nolan Beck, Hashan of Legend, Mark Scrub, K 
Kempo Ninja 187, Jamie Hall, Maxfield Knuckles, John Miller, Jay, Roland, Nigel, Ben Baxter, Richard, Fabrizio, Dub XB, Commissar Mailvich, Boyd Dragon, Paxson Fisher, Matthew James, Jan, and Mikhail. Thank you guys for your channel membership. Thank you for doing your part. I also want to do a shout out to the latest Patreon supporters as well. So a huge thank you to Carnivore Grappler, James Harrison, Jesse Thompson, Noah Eddy, Tristan D. Graham, 32mm Matt, John Miller, Hootie, Liam Bud 2947 Zhang Jerry, Tyler McKee, BC Crowther, and Imperial Jake. Thank you guys for your ongoing Patreon support. And last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal thank you to all of the top tier Patreon supporters. These are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting the channel. So a massive thank you to Bon Bon Vert, Navy Veteran, Phil French, Ross Miller, Tequile, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Sawfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Tom Sutton, and of course, Sly Varney, the one man super chat and army. Massive thank you to all of you guys. Your ongoing support is a huge part of why I'm able to do this full time. So thank you so much. I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.